Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how to build a calculator with Ruby on Rails' hotwire without any JavaScript. I've just published a video on how to create dependent dropdown with hotwire, and someone asked how to do that in a context of a more complex form where submitting the form might not be desired. So, this calculator is an example of how to fix that. And the way I've done it here is I'm building an object incrementally by collecting user input. So until the object is complete, we're not moving further. It's almost similar to a loop where you pause and wait for something to happen. And when it does, you continue to do something else. Uh, in this case, we're not waiting, but we're building an object incrementally, sort of. The first click sets the first operand, and then it renders the page. Then the second click sets the operation, and then it renders the page again. Finally, the third click performs the operation, sets the result, and resets the object. Before we look at how this is done, I wanted to let you know that if you want to learn Ruby on Rails, and especially these new features including Hotwire, you might want to check out my practical Ruby on Rails for beginners class. Now, let's take a peek behind the scenes. It all starts with the form, which is how I've built this calculator. We'll get to the turbo frame tag in a second, but if you look at how this is built, you'll see that it's all buttons. When the user clicks any of the buttons, the form gets submitted, and it goes through the controller, which is very simple. It builds the operation object using the form data, and if the resulting object is valid, it will perform the calculation and display the result. But if the resulting object is invalid, it will re-render the form using the object. And that's why I said it's building the object incrementally. That's a little bit misleading because it doesn't really do that. Instead, it's building multiple objects, but each time with the data it got from the last request. So the first time it gets the first operand, and because you can't perform a calculation with just one operand, the object is invalid. To see why that is, let's take a look at the operation object for a second. The operation object includes active model model to make validations easier, and it has four attributes. The two operands, the operation, and the result. And the validation rules make sure that the operands and the operation are present, otherwise we wouldn't be able to perform the operation. So we're setting those attributes in this build method, which takes an array and it extracts each of the three attributes out of it. Then it returns a new object using those attributes. So if we go back to the controller, you'll see the build method here, and it takes everything in the params. Now the reason that works is because we're sending in an array. So you see here this operation array. And when we click a button, we can see in the logs how the post request looks like. It's just an array. But to populate that array with more than just one value, we're also setting some hidden fields in the form namely these two at the top here. So let's look at what happens when we click one of the buttons. You'll see the values of these three fields changes and they get sent in the next request and so on. That's the incremental part. Clicking a number sets the first operand, then clicking an operation sets the operation attribute. And finally, clicking the second number sets the second operand and performs the calculation because the object is valid when it has all three attributes set. So the controller calls calculate on the object when the object is valid. And the way calculate works is it calls whatever value is inside the operation attribute, it calls a method with that name. And the methods are defined as private here. And each of them sets the result attribute and then they reset the other three attributes so we can start over. And finally, when the result attribute is set, it gets displayed on the form. Here's also where the turbo frame tag comes in. If you don't have the frame, turbo will complain of not seeing a redirect after submitting the form. But because we're rendering a response to a turbo frame request, we're replacing the form frame. And that's okay. So that's how the result gets displayed, but until the result is available, the form displays whatever the message method returns. And the message method displays either the first operand and then the operation, or the three dots when the form is reset. Obviously, this is just basic calculator functionality, and it could be extended to support a lot more features. But more importantly, I wanted to show you that it's possible to build something that's usually done with JavaScript without using any JavaScript. 
I hope you can see how Hotwire has a lot of potential, you just have to think differently about how you set up your application. Until next time, bye!